everybody, Joy here. <laughs> this is actually an insert. This is not the beginning of these snippets. <laughs> I'm adding this to the beginning of the snippets because I don't want to redo my video and uh, tell you. Number one, look, nothing's on the door anymore. Did you see? <laughs> nothing's on the door anymore. Because <laughs> I'm doing Zoom with Philly today and I decided I was going to finish hemming those two blouses so I could actually wear them and they could quit being a door decoration. <laughs> but I want to tell you, I don't know if all of you saw Edit a Sitar yesterday. She had her weekly um, live, pardon me, my pants are falling down. She had her weekly live Wednesday instead of Friday. And Philly told me that she showed the colors of the fabric bundles for the mystery quilt that starts next week. Or May the 30th? When does she say it starts? I think it starts May the 30th. I don't know, it's quite confusing. But I wanted to tell you right here at the beginning, we're not doing it. We are not doing it. I know I said we could Zoom, maybe. I didn't even ask Philly yet <laughs> about that. But I think Philly uh, would have done it with us. But I don't want to make that quilt. The quilt has two packages of her silhouette applique shapes. They're the same shapes I just did on that barn quilt. The long stems and the circles, maybe some other shapes, the little bird. I have already done those. I don't want to do them anymore, especially right now. You know, maybe when I get this one done. But uh, I just, I was not impressed with any of the color choices. Um, a lot of her bundles didn't have any greens, and I thought, well, how can you do a garden without greens? Edita said that it was a Mother's Day quilt for mothers. So, I don't know exactly what that has to do with it, if it's going to say Happy Mother's Day or what. But, I am not interested in making this particular mystery quilt. Now, when it's all done, <laughs> we can always make it in the future. If she gets it all done and I'm like, oh, I made the biggest mistake in the world, we should have done that. We can always do it later. But I just want to tell you right up front, before you watch the rest of this, because I, I talk about it someplace in here, um, that I was excited and, and I thought we could do it. Whatever I said, just ignore that part of the video, okay? <laughs> and i got to go down and i got to get lunch ready for me and for Jerry. And... Um, then I'll start some more snippets, maybe tomorrow. I don't know, maybe. Everything's maybe right now. I've got to get Jerry back to Oklahoma City. Um, we'll be leaving early Monday morning. He's got to see the CPA. He's got to see the PA. He's got to see the cancer doctor. And I've got to see the eye doctor and the dentist. So I don't really think I'm going to have a lot of time in the next week. But you know me, I'll be back when I'm back. But here, you can start the snippets right here. Hey everybody, Joy here. It is Tuesday, May 9, 2023. <sighs> Getting a late start this morning, it's almost 11 o'clock. <laughs> I had so many comments after my last uh, video, and thank you, thank you, thank you, all of your kind uh, thoughts about Jerry. Let me explain something to you, okay? <laughs> but let me take a sip of first. I really need one. I've got a little hair. My little gray hairs get curly. <laughs> fall out one by one. That, my eyelashes. Not my eyelashes, my eyebrows. Between gray eyebrows and gray curly hairs. Oh, my heavens. <sighs> yes. So... Update on Jerry. I'm sure you're all wanting to know how Jerry's doing. Let me say, to start with, <laughs> the crazy way he was acting from things I have read and things I have been told had more to do with the uh, sedative that they gave him, the anesthetic. Is that what it's called? Where they put you to sleep in the hospital? And uh, had more to do with that than anything else. That and then the pain meds he was taking on top of it, um, they were just really messing up his mind. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, y'all. It really wasn't. He only disappeared two times, and he hasn't disappeared since. <laughs> but he took the uh, pain medications only one day. He took them Friday and Saturday. 
And of course, Friday, he didn't even need any. I think he took one before he went to bed that night. His surgery was in the morning. So they had some kind of pain block that lasted and lasted and lasted. He couldn't even feel his fingers. So the next day, he took four of them. And um, you're only supposed to take four in 24 hours. And he took four in 12 hours. And so I, I just... Is that right? Am I positive about that? Let me see. Don't take over four, and it's every six hours. Yes. So you're only supposed to take four every six hours, and he was taking them every four hours. And that's why he said, I'm a pharmacist. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but the next day, he totally, totally got off the pills altogether. So he had absolutely no pain pills on Sunday, no pain pills yesterday at all. And I went to the store and got him some Miralax, as I said. And so everything was back to normal. And he was back to normal in his mind. Everything was just great. But this morning, it, the, the worst part is this cast. I'll sh I told you I was going to show you a picture. I'll try to show you a picture today. But this cast, it's rigid, it's hard, and you can't, you can't lift it, you can't move your arm, you can't do anything. It's very thick and very hard. I mean, you put your arm into a soft sling, but it's all hooked up to where it's just hard. And, and when you lay down, your arm just sticks up in the air like this, and oh, it's been very, very hard for him to sleep. So he starts out in bed, then he'll go to a recliner, then he'll go to the couch, and then he'll go back to the recliner, then he'll go back to the couch, and he just can't sleep at night. And however he ended up on the couch last night, he woke up with a horrible pain in his neck this morning. So uh, he said, I'm going to take a pain pill, Joy. This is, this is really hurting me. So now that he's not on the anesthetic, is that what it's called? I think so. My words these days. Um... Now that he's not on the pain block, or what they gave him to put him to sleep, it's a normal reaction. And he took the pain pill, and 30 minutes later, he was sound asleep on the couch, and he's sound asleep now, and it's been three hours. So, back to normal. And no, I don't need any help. I'm just fine. I really am. Don't take me too seriously. <laughs> I'm just fine. I can handle that boy, I'll tell you. Let me take another sip of... You know what gets me stressed is not knowing how to do something. Not knowing what I should do or what I should not do or how I should do something. That's what stresses me. And so once that nurse called and told me, hey, it's okay if those uh, bandages get wet, just dab them till they're dry. And the directions, the printed directions say, Whatever you do, don't get the bandages wet. If so, call the doctor's office immediately. I mean, you know, how far away are those two instructions? <sighs> and I'm talking about after I took all of the tons of padding off of him. And now he just has Steri strips, okay? And it was talking about getting the Steri strips wet. So, he's fine. He's fine. He's sleeping the way he should be because he can't really do a whole lot of other things. Now, he can eat fine. He can eat fine. We got in the shower yesterday morning. And, of course, I'm just taking the bandages off. And for some reason, you know, your mind. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect. And so I think I'm going to sit him down. Well, he didn't get his knees operated on. <laughs> his legs are fine. <laughs> Nothing wrong with his legs. Why does he need to sit on a stool? <laughs> so I figured out that. I had the stool in there. I had a washcloth on it so it wouldn't be cold. And I figured out right away, I said, well, good grief, he walked in here and he's standing in here now, what does he need to sit down for? So just, just crazy joy. So he stood up and I put the shampoo in his hand and he did his own hair. And then I put the conditioner in his hand and he did his own hair. And all I had to do really was, you know, wash under his arm for him. He did not have the sling on. He had the thing I told you that I just wrapped around his arm and tied around his neck. And his arm looks like he was in a fight. His muscle right here is very swollen and black and blue. So I don't know what they did to his arm. 
they must have had it held in a certain position with a machine or something. But that was really sore yesterday. So anyway, got him showered. He won't wear anything but a hoodie uh, because it zips and unzips. So we put a clean hoodie on him. Okay, so don't worry about Jerry. Don't worry about me being able to take care of him. I have got this covered, let me tell you. Me and God, that's for sure. God is so good. All right, so yesterday I finished my E top. You know I'm doing the ABC challenge with Fit Nice system. And I did the A top, the B top, the C top, the D top. So I had to do an E top. So this is the E top that I did. It's called the Easy Fold Over Front Jacket. I think is what it says. So I decided to make that. And I was going to do the ties, you know, make that long little string band. What do you call that little thing? Judy calls it a strip. So you make this long skinny strip and then you just tie it. Well, I have these little, I had two of these little clasps that I bought from Peggy Sager several weeks back because I thought they were really cute and they were half price or something. Well, they were really cute till I went to put them on. Very, very hard to know how to attach it. So I bought a silver one, I bought a silver one and a gold one. And I put the gold one on that jacket. This is the silver one. So what you do is you lift this little bar thing. See the bar? Lift it. I wish Peggy would show this stuff and pull it apart. That's how you fasten it. And to close it, you put it together and you close that little bar. Well, how do you attach it to the garment? It's got this little place and it's got this little place. So I thought, well, I hate for it to show. So the first thing I did was I stuck it inside so it wouldn't show inside the top. You'll see when I show it to you. And sewed it that way. Well, it wouldn't work that way. It made it stay too far apart. So I unsewed all of that and started over. And I attached it just to the top and sewed it over these little holes here. But the thread shows. The thread shows where I sewed over that. So it's not very pretty. But then it's not sturdy enough to keep it from hanging. It kind of hangs, even though it's very, very light. And it kind of hangs instead of staying straight. So I tried sewing it around the front part of the clasp, thinking it would hold it straight. Well, it held it straight all right, but it wouldn't let me close it like this. It got in my way. So cute clasp, but I don't know if I would recommend them. But they are cute. So I made the top, and then I made the little t-shirt to go under it, the little um, tank to go underneath it, and I made it out of, out of, I made the little tank top to go under it out of this, and here you can see how I cut the neck out. I cut the neck out of the tank to be the same as the neck in the little jacket. So I took a couple pictures, so I'll show you the pictures right here. So that's what I did yesterday while Jerry was up here. Jerry stayed up here yesterday in the uh, TV room out there and he got in the recliner and his neck was hurting him. No, that's today. Yesterday he was just in regular pain. Still in pain, but he didn't want to take any of the pain meds. So he's, he's good with pain. He's not somebody that can't take pain. And um, he'll, he'll suffer it as much as he possibly can before he will take any drugs because he's a pharmacist and he knows all about the drugs, very much so. <laughs> so he got into the recliner, supposedly to watch television, but he just fell asleep for most of the day, so praise the Lord for that. And today, we're going to get back to the Passwork Barn. And I have some things to say about that. <laughs> what a shock, Joy has something to say about something. <laughs> I know. Several of you, or maybe it was just one of you, said that there should be um, strips between all of the block, sashing strips. Well, this quilt would be 100 feet long <laughs> if we did that. And this is not my quilt pattern. This is Edita Sitar's quilt pattern. 
And that's how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to have sashing strips in between. Okay? So that's why it is that way. Now, Edita put all of her blocks the same direction. You can see that. Here's one spool. Here's a spool. Here's a spool. And here's a spool. And so one of mine is sideways, but hers aren't. So, one of you mentioned that to me. And you somehow got the impression that that offended me, that you told me that didn't offend me at all, not in the least. So please, don't try to put thoughts in my head that aren't there. If I ask your opinion, I expect you to tell me your opinion. I'm not going to say, oh, no, that hurts my feelings. I'm terribly offended. That's not me. I'm not that person. If I was going to have my feelings easily hurt by somebody saying something about my quilt, I wouldn't show it to you. I wouldn't ask you your opinion to start with. Now, one of you, I think maybe two of you, said something about putting an X in the barn door. And so last night I got on the couch and I looked up pictures of barn doors. And oh my goodness, they all have some kind of X on them. So I've decided I'm going to leave it beige, but I'm going to put an X on it. So how about that? Thank you. I actually thought about that before anybody told me that. But um, I didn't really know how to do it, and I didn't think to look up pictures at the time. But since one of you mentioned it to me, I thought, hey, maybe that is a good idea. I'll go ahead and research it some more. <laughs> so I'm going to do that today. I'm going to move the basket. Jerry's downstairs asleep on the couch. And um, as long as I keep it quiet up here, his voice just travels right up the stairs so I can hear him if he needs me. And I go down and check on him like every five minutes. So <laughs> I'll say, can I bring you anything? Do you need some water? Do you want some coffee? Do you need a pill? Do you... Joy, I don't need anything. Just leave me alone. <laughs> so I'm very thankful he can sleep. That's wonderful. All right, I guess I will go in. And, oh, there was something I wanted to tell you first. Hold on, let me get another sip up. My embroidery design, you know, my embroidery design from EMB, EMB Library. It's Embroidery Library, but their website is emblibrary.com. And I get 99% of my designs from them because they're all very well done. I've never had any problem with them sewing out. So they sent me an email. They send me emails all the time. You know, buy one, get one free. Buy two, get one half price or whatever. Well, they sent me an email yesterday saying that this month's contest or this month's challenge, or I don't, I'm not sure what the words were, but if you show a picture of an embroidery design that you sewed, one of their designs, obviously, Embroidery Library, and I guess they bought Urban Threads, one of their designs, and show it on a sweatshirt, or a t-shirt. They put your name in a hat, or a bucket, or a dish, or a something. So then they mix all the names up at the end of the month, or however long it is. Then they pull out three winners, and you get a $25 gift card to use at their website. So I went over and I signed up for their um, Facebook page and I'm sure it's just embroidery library or M library or whatever if you want to go there go to emblibrary.com and I'm sure you can find out about it there and I think we still have a lot of time left but I, I put this on this morning so I could take a picture of it and I noticed that it's coming apart right here I have no idea why but I'm going to hand sew that together in a little bit <laughs> so that's why I'm wearing this so, I hope I win $25. I just love to win something, don't you? Everybody loves to win something, of course. So, I wanted to tell you about that in case you are an embroiderer. -er. I need to tell Becky about it because she's got 60,000 embroiderers. Her channel, oh my goodness, it grows so fast. But Becky offers everybody so much of her time and her talent and her work. So, it makes perfect sense that it would grow like that. She even goes on cruises. Oh, don't ask me to go on a cruise. No, no, not my thing. To me, it's a floating prison. I can't get off the ship. I can't decide I don't like it and go somewhere else. <laughs> went on one cruise for our 25th wedding anniversary, and both of us decided that would be the last one we ever went on. 
So I will go in there and take down my messed up areas of the patchwork barn and see if I can get a uh, big X or little X or something on that barn door without messing up the entire quilt. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what I'm going to do next. See you later. Okay, here's the deal, Neil. I've made two doors, and I don't know which one I like the best. <laughs> Probably when I look at this video, I'll know right away. I don't know. What am I going to do? <laughs> blue it is. I decided blue I like best. So you can see how I put some tearaway on the back, and I embroidered the door. Now I'm going to put it in the quilt. Happy Wednesday morning, everybody. Well, actually, is it Wednesday morning? <laughs> I'm telling you, being a nurse, <laughs> it takes so much of your time. My goodness, I just got started, goodness, an hour ago. Yeah, maybe an hour ago up here in my sewing room. I've been taking care of the patient, Mr. Burnside's. <laughs> we did get a normal shirt on him today. We found the coolest shirt. I'll have to show it to you when I get it off of him and get it washed. It totally comes apart. This totally comes apart and under here totally comes apart. So it's just like a separate front and a separate back and you snap them together. Oh, did that ever make it easy to put a normal t-shirt on him this morning. He looks so nice. He looks like Johnny Cash. Got a black shirt, a black sling, black pants, and black shoes. <laughs> he looks like Johnny Cash. And hopefully he's not outside getting in trouble. He wanted to go over to the barn a while ago and climb up on a step stool and get up on a shelf and get something. I went over there, I got up on the step stool, I got this something. So then he came home and behaved himself for a while. And so then he said, I'm going over to the barn, I promise I won't get hurt. He said, I've just got to do something to move around. So he's over playing in his barn doing something. So somebody asked me for the flax seed recipe. So I've got it all marked in yellow. And notice that there's a one pound loaf, a one and a half pound loaf, and a two pound loaf. And the two pound one is all marked in yellow. That's the one I make. And notice that the one pound and the one and a half pound loaves are made with milk. Then they put the two pound loaf and they say to use water. Well, I just decided that was a mistake somebody made. So I've been making it with milk since I discovered that mistake. So, real good for toast, freezes well. And I've got something written on the next page that's kind of showing through. Chia sesame bread, not great. Top caved in. Don't weigh the flour. Add more yeast. <laughs> weigh the flour. Some lady who has a YouTube channel on how to make bread right said that a cup of flour isn't really a cup of flour. She said you have to weigh a cup of flour and it's only supposed to weigh so many grams. I think 120, but don't, don't quote me on that. So I got this scale so I could weigh the flour. Well, my cup of flour weighs quite a bit more than say it's 120. Uh, mine comes up to like 130 or something. <laughs> so I started putting in the correct measurement according to my scale. Well then my bread came out airy and the top caved in. So I'm thinking that the people who write these recipes, when they put a cup of flour, they just put a cup of flour. They don't weigh it to see how many grams it is or whatever. So you decide what you want to do. I'm very, very new at this. I know hardly anything. <laughs> but I've made this flaxseed bread at least eight times now. And Jerry loves it. So I'm going to hold it up. I'll take a picture of it, huh? I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it up, but I'll just show you the cookbook that it's in. It's in this book and it's on this page. So I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it right here.
So I'll take you in and I'll show you my almost finished center part of the patchwork barn quilt. But I want to tell you something. You can go to Instagram, search patchwork barn quilt. Patchwork barn quilt. A whole bunch of pictures will come up. There will be some really weird ones of real barns with just barns that are like falling apart or something. I don't know what those are doing in there. But if you'll scroll down, you can see finished, quilted and everything, patchwork barn quilts and in totally different colors than I did mine in. And they are amazing. People are just such good quilters. It's amazing to me. <laughs> but I've done mine wrong in more than 50 ways. <laughs> I don't know. If I had two sets of blocks, it came out exactly six and a half inches square. Ugh. But let me tell you what I did wrong. Not that anybody cares, but I'll tell you anyway. I pieced all of this across, and I pieced all of the center across, and I pieced all the bottom across. You'll see it when I show it to you. You're not supposed to do it that way. You're supposed to piece this part, then the barn, then this part down here. Then you sew this to this to this. Then you're supposed to sew all these blocks to each other and all these blocks to each other and then put a great big long sashing in between. And so I did it wrong. <laughs> but it'll still go together and nobody will ever know, I guess, if I don't tell everybody all my mistakes like I always do. So I've still got... I still have these great big long borders on the side with the applique to do. And I think it looks just fine without that on it, but since I bought it and since I have it, I'll have to do it the proper way. <laughs> and other than that, um, I'm not doing anything else. Tomorrow is my Zoom day with Philly. And a lot of you said, hey, we'd really love to Zoom with you, especially Chris. Chris, you are so sweet. Do you know that little heart coaster you made me? I use it all the time. All the time in the coach. Every morning every day, every night, and it makes me so happy. I love it very much. And um, I actually showed it in one of my videos, but that one didn't get up for some reason. But <laughs> anyway, I just love that thing. So, Chris, you said you wanted to do it. A couple other ladies. Now, you have to understand, I seem to be, what do they call it when you're, you're not crippled, you're physically challenged, I seem to be Zoom challenged. My Zoom, if I call Philly and I say, here's a Zoom, connect to it. I'm inviting you to the Zoom meeting. And so she comes to the Zoom meeting. Well, 40 minutes goes by and it says, your Zoom time's up. We're turning this off. And it's goodbye, Philly. Goodbye, Joy. And it's over with. So they sent me this thing and said, if you pay so much money, you can have endless time on your Zoom. And that's what Philly has. So I said, oh, I'll get that too. I'll pay for that. So I paid for it, <laughs> and I wrote down my password and my username, and I made my computer remember it. But every time I get into Zoom, and I call her and invite her, and she comes to my Zoom meeting, when 40 minutes is up, it shuts us both down. <laughs> so I am Zoom challenged. I don't know why, <laughs> but that's where we are for now. So um, let me see. Is it Friday? I think this Friday on Edita Sitar's regular Friday thing where she's on for an hour and she shows you all the stuff she wants you to buy. I think she's going to talk about the new mystery quilt that's going to start the Monday after Mother's Day. So I think she's going to show the colors and she always puts sets of fabric together, which of course I always buy and um, for you to make it with. And she usually has more than one choice of color combinations. Well, I'm gonna tell you one thing, there better be a choice that's not blue and white because <laughs> I've got so many blue and white quilts. I've got the blue and white barns, I've got the blue and white ocean, I've got the blue and white season in blue, and I've got the blue and white patchwork barn. So, that's four, four blue and white quilts. So the Lord knows I don't need any more blue and white quilts. <laughs> So I hope there's some other color combination for it, because I would really love that. So I'm going to end this. Um, my patient has been out on his own now for over an hour, as long as I've been up here. 
and he's fine. He's totally fine. And um, his hand, you know, he's got his right arm in the sling. But his hand, his hand works just fine. And his other arm works just fine. And both of his legs work just fine. So he's okay. He really is. And I shouldn't worry about him as long as he's got that sling on. But he's been in a lot of pain. He was in a lot of pain yesterday. He didn't take any pain meds at all until yesterday. And somehow he slept crazy and he woke up with a really, really sore neck. And um, his arm was hurting him really bad from how he slept. I mean, he starts out in the bed. Then he goes to the recliner. Then he goes to the couch. And he just couldn't sleep anywhere. And the reason he can't sleep in the recliner is because his right arm is what's hurt. And the recliner um, step, the footrest, the recliner footrest lever is on the right. So I can put him in it, but then we have to get up and go to the bathroom. He can't get it down and back up again. So my lightning fast mind remembered yesterday afternoon. I said, Jerry, my passenger seat in the RV has a footrest and the buttons for the footrest are electric and they're on the left hand side of the seat. So we slept in the RV last night and Jerry slept in my passenger seat when we're driving, you know, and he slept much, much better and um, didn't have to change beds in the middle of the night. So, praise the Lord for that. That worked out great. <laughs> Thank God we have that RV. <laughs> I don't know what we would do otherwise. I think what we would do otherwise is we'd figure out how to rent a seat lift chair for a while. Good heavens, we used to sell them. We used to have a dozen of them lined up in our showroom, you know. But in those days, we didn't need one. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, I'm going to end this little snippet, Bill. But first, I'm going to take you in and show you how far... I've gotten along and what I did to the barn door. Are you ready? Okay. Now we have four white windows and a brown and blue barn door. I hope you all like it because I cannot change it again. So the top third needs to be sewn to the middle third and the bottom third needs to be sewn. To the middle third but other than that it's ready for the four remaining borders that go on the outside when I actually do get this done <laughs> we're gonna go back to the butterflies who have been put to the floor <laughs> because there's no place else to put them <laughs> but there they are I have one more panel of ten to make see there's a panel of ten on the top panel of ten in the middle and then there'll be another one on the bottom of 10 more butterflies. So I've got quite a bit left to do. Look at these caterpillars. Now, how fun are they? <laughs> oh my goodness, that Darcy Ashton. She's an amazing artist. Now my butterflies aren't exactly like hers. Because I tried to make them look like real butterflies. Why? I don't know really. <laughs> it would been a whole lot easier if I'd just done them simple. So, okay, from barns to butterflies to the mystery quilt, and I'll see you back soon. Bye for now.